Have you ever pondered the journey your favorite wine takes before it reaches your glass? It all begins in the heart of a vineyard, where rows upon rows of grapevines stretch as far as the eye can see. These vineyards, they're more than just a pretty sight. They are the cradle of the wine you savor, the birthplace of each bottle's unique character. The quality of the grapes is paramount in the winemaking process. The smallest variation in the grape's nature can dramatically alter the wine's taste, aroma, and color. It's no wonder then that winemakers are so particular about their vineyards, often treating each grapevine like a cherished child. And then there's the role of climate and geography. These two factors are so influential that they've given rise to an entire field of study, terroir. Terroir, a French term, explores how the vineyard's climate, soil and topography affect the grapes and thus the wine. A sunny climate, for instance, tends to produce grapes with higher sugar levels, leading to a fuller-bodied, more alcoholic wine. A cooler climate, on the other hand, can yield grapes with higher acidity, offering a crisper, more refreshing wine. Now let's talk about the initial stage of grape harvesting. This is a decision that's not taken lightly. The exact moment of harvesting can set the tone for the wine's flavour profile. Harvest too early and the wine may be too acidic. Harvest too late and the wine might end up overly sweet. It's a delicate balance, one that requires both knowledge and intuition. So, the first step of our wine's journey from vineyard to your glass is the careful cultivation and harvesting of grapes. This is where the magic begins, where the humble grape embarks on its transformation into the elixir we so lovingly call wine. Now, once the grapes are harvested, what happens next? We enter the world of fermentation. Fermentation, my dear friends, is where the magic truly begins. It's a fascinating process, seemingly simple yet remarkably complex, turning grape juice into the intoxicating elixir we call wine. Imagine this. The juice of the freshly harvested grapes is teeming with natural sugars. But what good are these sugars without a little transformation? Enter yeast, the unsung hero of winemaking. This microscopic organism has a rather magnificent ability. It feasts on the sugars present in the grape juice, and as it does so, it releases alcohol and carbon dioxide in a process we call fermentation. But fermentation is not just about alcohol. Oh no, it's about so much more. It's about flavor, aroma, and the very soul of the wine. You see, as yeast interacts with the sugars, it also produces a symphony of other compounds. These include esters, which give wine its fruity aromas, and phenols, which contribute to the taste and color of the wine. And then there's the matter of temperature. Fermentation is a fickle process sensitive to its surroundings. The temperature during fermentation can drastically affect the wine's flavor profile. Cooler temperatures can lead to more fruity and floral notes, while warmer temperatures may result in spicier, bolder wines. It's a delicate dance, one that requires patience and precision. Winemakers must carefully monitor and control the fermentation process to ensure that it proceeds just right, producing a wine that is balanced and flavorful. It's as much an art as it is a science, a testament to the incredible complexity of winemaking. But perhaps the most remarkable thing about fermentation is that it's a completely natural process. It's been happening for thousands of years, long before humans even knew what yeast was. It's nature's way of creating something delightful from something simple. Fermentation, a natural but intricate process, transforms our humble grapes into a spirited beverage. Our wine has alcohol now, but it's not quite ready. What comes next? We move on to the maturation and aging process. Now that our wine has successfully fermented, it's time to give it a bit of character and complexity. This is where the magic of maturation and aging comes into play. So, what exactly happens during this phase? Well, once the fermentation process is complete, the wine is transferred into barrels for the maturation process. These barrels are typically made from oak, a type of wood that imparts a unique set of flavors to the wine. It's akin to a seasoning process, much like how a sprinkle of spices can transform a simple dish into a culinary masterpiece. The oak barrels give the wine hints of vanilla, spice, and sometimes a touch of smoke, depending on the type and treatment of the wood. During maturation, 
The wine also undergoes a series of chemical reactions which help to soften the harsh tannins and bring balance to the wine's acidity. This process enhances the overall taste, giving the wine a smoother and more rounded flavour profile. But what's the difference between maturation and ageing, you might ask? While they're often used interchangeably, there's a subtle distinction. Maturation is the period when the wine is still evolving and gaining complexity, usually in the barrel. Aging, on the other hand, refers to the time the wine spends in the bottle after it has been corked. During aging, the wine continues to evolve, but at a slower pace. It's a period of rest, allowing the flavors to integrate and develop further depth. Each wine has its own aging potential, with some wines reaching their peak after just a few years, while others can be cellared for decades. A wine's journey from grape to glass is a fascinating one, filled with science, patience and a dash of magic. Maturation and aging are crucial steps in this journey, helping to transform the raw, fermented juice into a beautiful, complex beverage. With time, our wine matures and develops a depth of flavour, getting one step closer to perfection. After our wine has matured, what's left? It's time for bottling. Bottling, my dear friends, is not just about getting the wine into a glass container. No, it's a delicate art, a science, and an essential part of the winemaking process. It's the final stage where we seal in all the hard work, the time, the anticipation, and of course the exquisite flavours and aromas of the wine. You see, the bottle and the cork, they are not just vessels. They are guardians, protectors of the liquid treasure within. The bottle provides a sturdy, non-reactive home for the wine, protecting it from the outside world. Its shape, colour and size all play a part in maintaining the wine's condition. Darker bottles, for instance, shield the wine from harmful light that could potentially alter its character. Now let's talk about the unsung hero of the wine world, the cork. This humble bit of tree bark has a critical role in the life of a wine. It not only holds the wine in, but it also lets the wine breathe. Yes, wine needs to breathe just like you and I. The cork allows a tiny amount of oxygen to interact with the wine, helping it to evolve and develop complexity over time. But it's not just any cork that will do. It needs to be of high quality, free of any defects that could taint the wine. A bad cork can lead to a condition known as cork taint, giving the wine an unpleasant musty odour. We certainly don't want that, do we? So you see, bottling is not just a matter of convenience, it's a crucial step that ensures the wine you savour has been preserved at its best, ready to offer you an unforgettable sensory experience. With bottling, our wine is now ready to embark on its final journey to your glass. Finally, our wine has journeyed from the vineyard through fermentation and maturation to bottling. And now, it's ready for the final pour. This final act may seem simple, but it is as pivotal as the previous stages in the winemaking process. It's the moment where the wine, this living, breathing entity, finally gets to breathe and express itself fully. The act of serving wine is an art in itself. The right temperature, the right glass, these are not trivial details. They are the final touches that can enhance, or if done incorrectly, diminish the wine drinking experience. Let's talk about temperature first. Serving wine at the right temperature can make a world of difference to its taste. For instance, white wines are typically served chilled, somewhere between 7 and 10 degrees Celsius. This brings out their crisp, refreshing flavours. Reds, on the other hand, are generally served slightly cooler than room temperature, between 15 and 18 degrees Celsius, to highlight their complex flavours and aromas. Now, onto the glass. The shape and size of a wine glass can greatly affect the wine's aroma and flavour. A wide, round glass is best for red wines as it allows more oxygen in, which helps to release the wine's aromas. White wines, however, are typically served in narrower glasses, which help to concentrate the aromas at the top of the glass. It's also worth noting that pouring the wine is not just about getting it from the bottle to the glass. It's about giving the wine some room to breathe, to open up and show its true character. This is especially true for older red wines, which often benefit from a little aeration before drinking. And there you have it, the journey of your favourite wine from grape to glass. Each sip is a testament to the art and science of winemaking.